the aesthetic and medical world is fast changing and dynamic. We continue to look out for safe and clinically proven products for our consumers. It is important to work closely with the staff to know what is going on in the market. We encourage one another to be better so that we can transfer the knowledge and result to our end users. Trust is built and maintained with consistent hard work over time. Having been in the industry for over 20 years, we are proud of our experience and remain committed to focusing our energy on bringing the latest proven technology to our consumers. At New Asia, we want to encourage our people to be positive, adaptable and resilient. Our employees of all levels are given opportunities to take ownership of projects. They are able to see how their efforts make a difference at New Asia and we are happy to recognize their achievements. We maintain an environment for growth that enables our people to readily take up challenges, facing tasks that requires them to be flexible and have a never give up attitude. In an environment where our people can feel ownership and thus place much care in their work, it translates to good service experience for our customers. We believe our people must see their personal growth through their work at New Asia. Working out at the gym and trying to gain muscles? But there are no results no matter how hard you try? Introducing the Tesla Former Machine for functional magnetic stimulation. Why waste time at the gym when you can let the Tesla Former do the work for you? Through the power of the functional magnetic stimulation. All you need is lay down for 30 minutes. Tesla Former is non-invasive and painless, and it stimulates the muscles with the use of high-intensity magnetic fields. The Tesla Former treatment is hassle-free, and you don't even have to remove your clothes. Tesla is your lunchtime quick fix to the toned body you've always wanted. Visit a Tesla Former authorized clinic to find out more. I'm a regional technical manager in New Asia, Singapore. My days usually begin with phone calls and queries from my customers. Phone calls and text message are the first line of support to resolve basic and common fault. When needed, I will be there in person to troubleshoot and repair. I have been in this trade for 16 years. It can get challenging when I have to coordinate tight service schedules and accommodate last-minute breakdown calls. In this shop, the most important thing is to listen to my customer feedback and to meet their needs. This will build up their trust in me. I write full service reports for each service call so that I can keep track of my work and to better serve different requirements. I also enjoy imparting my knowledge to my engineers. The best job satisfaction is when I see that the machine is back to good working condition after my inspection, testing and repair. My name is Ryan Singh. I'm a regional technical manager in New Asia, Singapore.
Starting your own family is a joyous occasion. It's a well-kept secret of mothers that childbirth and the precedent pregnancy can leave a huge impact on the mother's pelvic floor. A common annoyance is urinary incontinence. A Tesla chair is a solution for young mothers. The 30-minute Kegel exercises on steroids are achieved by a patient comfortably sitting down in the chair and the magnetic field non-invasively contracting the weakened pelvic floor muscles. The treatments increase the strength and volume of the pelvic floor muscles so that they can hold urine again. The treatment is hassle-free as you do not need to remove your clothes. Just by sitting on the chair operated by the medical doctor, the pelvic floor disorders are reduced and normal lifestyle functions are restored. Hurry to our Tesla former authorized clinic to find out more. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, in this webinar. No matter which time zone you are in you are in right now or which part of the globe you are in right now, thank you for joining us this webinar organized by Iskra Medical and New Asia, who is a distributor of Singapore and Malaysia. I'm Jasmine from New Asia and I will be your host for this webinar. If let's say you have any questions along the way during this webinar, please feel free to type in the Q&A box uh, below. We'll address them at the end of this session. Before we invite our speaker, Dr. Gavira, to share with us, I would like to invite Iskra Medical Sales Director, Javier Lopez, who is my co-host, to share a few words. Thank you very much, uh, Jasmine. Uh, and welcome everybody. I mean, uh, today is a very special day for us because uh, we've been uh, starting working uh, very strong in Asia and uh, we have now distributors in all country and we have uh, one of the best speakers in the world, Dr. Gaviria, and we are very happy to share it with you guys. Uh, first, I would like to uh, share a little bit uh, my thankful to Neo Asia. I mean, Neo Asia is a great partner and it's been a pleasure for me working with uh, Hen Hui, Jimmy, and of course also with Jasmine. Okay, so for all the doctors, they know me already. Uh, hope I can visit you soon. At Iskra Medical, we are very happy to share with you because we want to do business in a different way, like a new style of doing business like Neo Asia, in this loyal and committed way with a lot of passion and bring and share with you our way we do stuff. I mean, the Iskra Medical was founded in 91, and during this time, uh, we've, been we've been having such uh, strong grounds all over the world, so we're very happy. Let me now introduce our uh, speaker, Dr. Gaviria. Uh, Dr. Gaviria has been in the industry for a long time. He's graduated in Venezuela as a OBGYN. Uh, is a pioneer in vaginal rejuvenation treatment with lasers in, in this side of the world. Uh, he's also one of the first who start to combine the technologies. I'm, I'm talking about laser and uh, electromagnetic. He's been working with the electromagnetic since 2012. And uh, for three years, he's been part of our family, the Iskra family. And we're very proud to have him as part of our team. Uh, right now, uh, he's in the States. He's uh, a president of the, uh, I mean, director of the Academy of Laser in America, but he also has a graduate from the Techno University here in Barcelona. So, I mean, share this amazing knowledge, this amazing opportunity he's give, been giving us, and hope to see you soon when I visit you in Singapore. Okay, that's all. Welcome, Dr. Gaviria. Your mic. Well, yes. And thank you so much, Neoesha. Thank you so much, Iskra Medical, for giving me the opportunity to be here. It's, it's, it's a tremendous pleasure for me uh, as, as, as a medical doctor to share my knowledge and my experience because this is most of what are we going to talk. I appreciate uh, everybody who is being. Um, getting into this webinar from all around the world as i see in the attendees list and good morning for america good afternoon for europe and good evening for my 
friends in Asia. I miss Singapore, been there, and I love it. Uh, Iskra uh, Neosha asked me to talk to you a little bit of what has been uh, my electromagnetic uh, experience. And I'm going to start sharing my screen so I can start the webinar. We can be talking about this. So, I'm going to be talking about functional magnetic uh, stimulator. I'm going to be talking because as I uh, OBGYN and double board certified in aesthetic medicine, and as a specialist in electromagnetic uh, devices like lasers and, and this that I am going to present today, uh, I think that uh, I am in a very good position. Thank you, Javier, for saying it's the best speaker in the world. Uh, I, I, I just uh, humble uh, to those worlds, but I, I will try to do my best today and try to share uh, some of things that I know about this. Uh, okay, okay. What is the uh, justification to be talking about this? We are talking about pelvic floor, and and with the with the pelvic floor, uh, we need to understand that that the uh, female organs and and uh, male organs are uh, suspended and being uh, in 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 different planes of muscular tissues. But under a uh, line there, in, in between the muscles, there is a lot of connective tissue that uh, those connective tissues are most of collagen fibers, elastin, and, and this is all that is give us the support. Uh, because when we were on our far um, feet and uh, we were walking on our hands, there was not pelvic floor um, um, stress but once we decide to stand up and walk that is when all the abdominal pressure came into the pelvic floor to these muscles and to and, and all that uh, pressure from the abdominal walls and the bowels are going into that so this has to be very uh, well sustained not to get some uh, pelvic dysfunction so remember muscles and collagen so this is this is how we understand and most of these uh, pelvic floor uh, muscles and collagen uh, fascias are uh, needs uh, to be uh, in the right uh, position because when the stress of maybe a delivery comes through the muscles and through the vaginal canal, they might do some damage. There can be some perineal tears. This is, is the most common cause of pelvic diaphragm relaxation. So pelvic floor is 80% collagen and muscles. Collagen and muscles. And that is where the electromagnetic field, the electromagnetic field, because there is no magnetism or there is no electricity without the others. This is what uh, is all about electromagnetic fields. And, and we're going to be talking a lot today about these phenomenon and how this energy can have some different treatments or different interactions with our tissues and with our muscles. EVDs are now called the energy-based devices. EVDs are energy-based devices, like we have lasers, like you have seen, like herbiums, CO2, diodes, hybrids, that can help to regenerate, to, reno to, to rejuvenate the pelvic floor tissue, the collagen, the epithelium. Radio frequency has been seen that all the energy that is proven by the electromagnetic field that this uh, puts into the tissue 
also helps to do that has the micro damage in the uh, being seen in the high intensity focus ultrasound in the high food it's also being used in the pelvic floor and light and, and the light emitting di diodes like the leds also like we use it in all over the body and face we are using it also in the pelvic floor and vaginal tre treatments remember that most of this uh, applies to tissue to collagen but where does the magnetic field comes because remember that i just said that you have 80 percent collagen and muscles in the pelvic floor. So you're treating collagen, you're creating collagen, you're incrementing the tension of the tissue, but what about the muscles? You know that if we have muscle dysfunction, we're going to have tissue dysfunction. Muscles and, and ligaments are the ones that can and help all the pelvic floor to be tensioned and to uh, stay in the, in the place that it's supposed to be. So lasers are just by a stimulated emission and those work in a different wavelengths. And those wavelengths depending, depends on the frequency of that energy traveling through the electromagnetic field. And that electromagnetic field and that frequency give us different electromagnetic uh, 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 feel uh, rays like gamma rays x-rays we get the ultraviolet light we get visible light from the spectrum that so we can see colors we get the infrared we get the microwaves and so on so here is where it's based the electromagnetic as we have been using in medicine field with for a long long time ago so there's a lot of transmission of uh, this energy but into the tissue as both together. There is no way that we can put visible light or invisible light from the infrared zone without putting the magnetic there. So uh, we, can, we can put radio frequency by monopolar, bipolar, multipolar, and we are going to still having some stimulation, but remember, electromagnetic wave so we we are putting uh, lights we're putting radio frequency to the tissue to get energy within and to have changes into the tissue but look how shallow we go where is the muscles being uh, treated there is no thing that we are doing this is just tissue remodeling and i can say that with uh, with a really nice uh, experience because I am the first one who published about non-ablative non laser treatments into the vaginal canal for uh, vaginal relaxation syndrome. So I, 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 I come from a, a really nice background of electromagnetic fields. I, I feel like uh, some guys call me the laser guy, but I think that I am the electromagnetic guy. I, I like how the EVDs work in this. Because if a laser can help us to shrink the, the, the vaginal canal and give us 95% of more friction, almost 85% on the sensation, on, uh, sorry, 85% on the sensation of the sexual partner, and you can see improvements on friction, orgasm, and, and we can uh, evaluate this just by shrinking collagen just by creating more tightening effect believe me when we can combine this tissue remodeling with some muscle tone this is going to be the game changer and it's, it's, it's about creating collagen in the tissue as has been proved in the literature but what about the patients that has like symptomatic vagin uh, atrophic vaginitis. What about them? They, if, if we see postmenopausal pathologies, what about them? Most of those menop postmenopausal will have cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, breast cancer, endometrial cancer, but what about urogenital atrophy? 
all of the postmenopausal women are going to be there. So there's, there's no risk of, there's a low risk of these pathologies, but all of those women, all of you that, uh, that were some, in some countries celebrating Mother's Day yesterday and happy Mother's Day to all the ones that are listening, once those mothers get to the menopause, uh, they will get some kind of atrophy. And that your, your genital atrophy most of those, 45% of those women getting into menopause are going to suffer from this uh, symptomatic atrophy. But what is the problem? The 25% of those are the ones that only consult and looking for an answer. So if you think on um, this little note, 25% of the female menopausal population are suffering and are looking for answers. And those answers are to help with these signs and symptoms that they have, like vaginal dryness, vermic irritation, chronic leucorrhea, dyspareunia, dysuria, polynocturia or polycuria, and urinary incontinence. And if you see this, this is something that can be uh, modulated by, by neuromuscular approaches that some of their EVDs will lack into this. So <clears throat> we need to understand that one of the most important causes of decrease in sexual desire is the lack of lubrication and pain during sexual intercourse. So as I I, as I've been talking, I am just trying to justify why are we seeking answers for our women? Because if we see an histology of a severe vaginal atrophy, we lack of vessels, we lack of thick epithelium, we lack of collagen and muscle tissue. So this is what it comes with age. Stress urinary incontinence also in our patients is a really high prevalence. How can we say that three out of 10 patients will get some kind of urinary stress leakage? So they sneeze, they cough, and they, get, they lose a little bit of the uh, urine. And sometimes they think that this is normal because it happened to their mom, it happened to their aunt, it's happening to her sister. So if it's, if they think that this is a natural order of the family. This is like uh, happening and this is normal. This is not normal. One drop of stretched urinary leakage. Uh, that peeing yourself, this is not normal. So if, if, if this is happening, we need to understand that maybe there is a hypermotility of the uh, urethra or there is maybe just these tissues are falling or maybe the pelvic floor muscles are not well Tone, and that is why this movement and this <clears throat> descent of the uh, anterior wall can uh, be getting into this. So I know that there is a lot of, of, of treatments like the TVT slings, the TOT slings, or the mini slings, and you know, you need training, and there is so much to be known about this, about the surgical failures of this, because maybe it, it is too loose, maybe it is too tight, or maybe it's right. So you got three different surgical outcomes, and, and you are always uh, scared that these um, vaginal meshes can extrude. So I'm going to, uh, to, to present you the options that you have in the surgical approach. You can use it by laser, like we are doing it, or we can stimulate muscle tones into the pelvic floor so we can get uh, a, 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 somehow improve the continence of our patient. So yes, electromagnetic wave, electromagnetic waves. How can that help in the vaginal prolapse treatments? I have different patients, patients that come from this to this with one single session of improvement on the tissues. 
improvements on the tissues because we are drinking collagen. So most of the second level of the lancy in the pelvic floor are collagen. But what about if we get some more improvements after two sessions of the tissue regeneration, but also improving the muscle tone? And that is what I call the pelvic gym, and you will hear about it. Look at this patient after two sessions. This is the before and this is the after. So, no surgical approach, just DVDs, electromagnetic therapy. So, electromagnetic therapy, union of treatments for tissue, but today I am going to focus on the magnetic field. And the magnetic field, the functional magnetic stimulator, is a non-invasive, it's a painless method that allows for a non-contact stimulation of the superficial and deep tissue under the influence of a high intensity magnetic field. So what is the most important thing here? No contact, superficial and deep tissue. And just by creating a magnetic field, just creating a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is created by this machine into these uh, applicators and those applicators can be attached or are attached to a chair that comfortably we can sit the patient. We got a back uh, support for, uh, for, for the patient. So the patient is not uh, uh, those 20 or 30 minutes just tired of not having a back support. Back support is very important because this angle is very important to get the therapy right where we want. And how does the magnetic field activate the muscles? Well, basically rapid fluctuations of the magnetic field in the conductive materials are induced, uh, materials, sorry, conductive materials induce electric fields. And I will show you uh, a quick um, graph about it. This phenomenon is known as electromagnetic induction. So, is a, a, if the value of the generating electricity fields exceed the threshold of the value of the nerve, then the action of the potential of the nerve of the nerve is triggered. So, in the motor nerve, action potential is spread toward the muscles and activate contractions of the muscle fiber. So, it is it is very simple. What we want is to create a magnetic field, just magnetic, that is going to be in somehow spreading in, into our superficial and deep structures. And that is going to depolarize the nerves. So it's creating that response because I told you that there is no magnetism without electricity. So that is where the magnetic field just depolarizes the nerves and those nerves in going to put into action the contractions of the muscles. So everything is going to be work because the threshold of the frequency of the magnetic fields overpass this muscle's uh, threshold and that's why the contractions is going to be uh, uh, happening. So that's, that is basically what we want to achieve. And, and as we are going to be talking about this, I'm going to say that the functional magnetic stimulation is basically a method of nerve stimulation that does not depend on the passage of electricity current through the electrodes through the skin. So there's no needles going into the muscles. There is the magnetic field, no contact to the muscles to get to that nerve stimulation. So the goal of the magnetic stimulation is to make the current flow into the nerve tissue. That is resulting in the depolarization of the nerve, cell membrane, and onset of action potential. So a pulse of magnetic field penetrates the body and this induces an electric field. 
using the right frequency. This is important, right frequency and the power uh, that uh, in case of we're talking magnetics, we're talking about power in Teslas or Gauss. Cause this will cause muscle stimulation as have good influence on the function of the body. So we have the Tesla, uh, the, the, the magnetic field being created in the B field, magnetic field. So in the field of electricity, we're going to have this neuronal despolarization that is so, so past the supra threshold and that is going to release neurotransmitter in the pre and post synaptic action and that is going to have a trans transsynaptic action. And what is the behavior? We are looking for muscles and we're going to have contraction of the muscles. So we create a magnetic field that depolarize nerves. So just keep that in mind so you understand the basics of these treatments. What are what I think those are the advantage of that uh, functional magnetic stimulation? Well, Simple allows for deep and heterogeneous tissue stimulation. So there is different tissues that are going to be regenerated by these changes of uh, electro, uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, stimulation. This allows also deep muscle stimulation that something that transcutaneous cannot reach. So if you are thinking about electro, electrotherapy to the muscles of the pelvic floor, you can only achieve that by just being in the superficial muscles. You cannot uh, get into the deep muscles. So some, uh, some stimulations with the electricity, with needles, with, uh, is just going to be just superficial. This is non-invasive as is painless. It is really painless. I have tried it and I will show you one video when I, when I try it. Uh, this stimulates mus musculature, is uh, effective uh, and no contact with the patient. So there is no need for the medical uh, doctor to be around this patient during the 20 or 30 minutes of treatment as uh, the patient just sit, relax and maybe read a book. So changes, yes, we have good changes, and I'm going to show my changes as we see that we have some statistical significance when we compare to group controls and when we compare to electro electrotherapy and uh, stimulation. There is uh, uh, good presentations, and this, when I read this, my good friend Jure gave me this when we met back in Dubai almost four years ago, and, and he showed me this, and, 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 and what I saw about this was changes, and, and it was a really good change for the postpartum treatments that, uh, that uh, is, 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 is a good way to, to get our OBGYNs to understand that this can help our patients after deliveries. But I saw this, and I say, wow, you got nice changes on a stress urinary incontinence. And for that time, I didn't have any weapons of choices in my EVDs for huge urinary incontinence. And of course, if I didn't have for this, mixed urinary incontinence. So we need to understand that to do the right diagnostic in this is, is the right knowledge and the good assessment on the diagnosis of your patient. Because if we don't recognize or we don't use the, 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 the support to, to, to differentiate what is an incontinence of a stress or urge, what is a mixed ur uh, urinary incontinence, maybe we cannot get the right tool for that patient or maybe the right medicine for that patient because if we get a stress urinary incontinence, is that patient that with any stress or maybe a, a too much stress, she will leak um, some urine. So it is like if she cough, if she sneezes, if she does exercise, if she's the, she loses uh, during, uh, during sexual intercourse, that is a stress. Urge, the patient cannot get to the bathroom. 
She ran to the bathroom, but she pees herself before getting into. He makes, we get both of them. So overacting bladder, also a problem. I didn't have the tools for that in that moment. So I got, I was very impressed by this. When, when you showed me this, I was like, wow, you are going into this. And for that time that I was doing electromagnetic therapy, I was not having with my EVDs any improvements on urge. Just some reports of some patients having improvements on some uh, urge urinary incontinence. And, and, and I, I am sure that uh, most of the distributors that have this technology can get you these uh, studies that, that can help that, that can help you see how you can get fully drive and urinary incontinence and mix uh, urinary incontinence just by helping creating that magnetic field and creating muscle tone. But this is not only uh, uh, changes of, of muscles. Remember that, uh, that as we create an electromagnetic field, there is going to be a lot of uh, super, super uh, thrall, uh, contraction of the muscles and that is going to create increase of the blood flow. And that blood flow eventually is going to create and bring some growth factors that are going to help to uh, regenerate tissue. So there's going to be changes. And, and, you, and, and, and you see it in the, in the scientific studies that they have. Without, uh, with, with uh, the systematic capacity, the maximum urethral closure of pressure, and you see it here, just, just imagine these changes on your patient just by sitting them on a chair and gain, getting them in, into the uh, magnetic field. So they can sit very nice, relaxed, readable, um, and, and it's very comfortable. The back is very important. So you don't want to sit on, a, on, 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 on maybe a park bench for 20 minutes without any back support. That is, going to be, that is going to be tiring for you, for your patient. And if you don't have the right support and the right angle for this battery to get in, into, the, into the tissue, then the problem that I have seen is that sometimes the patient is just trying to move into the chair, trying to find their sweet spot. I think that if you get the right ergonomic chair for this, this is going to be something that is going to impact on the muscles and the tissue at the level that you want. So the, the ergonomics of this is very important as we are aiming for results on your patient. So think of this chair as a really nice ergonomic. And the good thing is that you not only have one battery in to the pelvic floor, but you also have a battery in the back, as I'm going to show you in a video. So you can have some lumbo, lumbosacral uh, treatments. And remember, as I say, nerve depolarization, this is going to create some neuromodular neuromodulation that is going also to help all those nerves uh, to regenerate, to help to be uh, more effective. And this is also is what is helping into the um, urge and overacting bladder treatments. And so what happened with weak pelvic floor? Well, maybe it's the tissues surrounding the structures, the three structures, in the female uh, body organ. Uh, but if we get the right support of the muscles, we can maybe help also those tissues to be in the position and those organs be in the positions that they supposed to be. And if we see there's a lot of muscles and same muscles surrounding sexual organs, but those muscles are into the superficial and deep tissues are going to be the ones responsible for all the support of the abdominal uh, um, um, organs that with the gravity will go down. So we have a 
uh, pelvic battery and we have also um, lumbosacral battery. I'm going to show a quick video. Hope it's not too loud. put that face when you're doing some apps, you're sitting on your lap and you're doing apps. How many of you have that face <laughs> getting a shape with that? It's, it's, it, it is something that uh, is uh, revolutionizing the market, is revolutionizing how you, how you see the treatments and how you see the improvement on the tissue. And I'm going to continue talking about this. This is something that uh, I, I, I do think that is, is changing the, the, the way. And if you look at this video, you will think Starting your own family is a joyous occasion. It's a well-kept secret of mothers that childbirth and the preceding pregnancy can leave a huge impact on the mother's pelvic floor. A common annoyance is urinary incontinence. A Tesla chair is a solution for young mothers. The 30-minute Kegel exercises on steroids are achieved by a patient comfortably sitting down on the chair and the magnetic field non-invasively contracting the weakened pelvic floor muscles. The treatments increase the strength and volume of the pelvic floor muscles so that they can hold urine again. The treatment is hassle-free as you do not need to remove your clothes. Just by sitting on the chair, operated by the medical doctor, the pelvic floor disorders are reduced and normal lifestyle functions are restored. Hurry to our Tesla former authorized clinic to find out more. Starting your own family. Okay, so I'm going to talk, talk to you about what I did uh, three years ago. I did, uh, I did, I, I did two sessions every week. I, what is happening? I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay. Now let's get to the, sorry, the protocol. The protocol that I try to, to, to see how, how can we be effective is I, I put and I set my patients into the chair two times a week. So it was uh, Monday and Thursday, or maybe Tuesdays and Fridays. Or some patients that they cannot come twice a week, I put them in weekly sessions whenever they can. So what I did is just six, six total treatments on these patients. For the vaginal relaxation syndrome, what I ask is the VAS scale. VAS scale is visual analog scale. I will show you this. I did one before and, uh, and after the treatments, I did follow-ups at one, six, 12, and 24 months. For stress urinary incontinence, I evaluate the ICQCF in the short form. If, if this is a questionnaire for incontinence. Mixed urinary incontinence, uh, I, I was not uh, do, using any scales, so I used the bath also for uh, urinary incontinence. For genital urinary syndrome of menopause, bath scales, and pelvic chronic uh, pain, I also use the bath scale. So 
uh, these are the different uh, uh, patients and through through the time with a vaginal relaxation syndrome, stress urinary, mixed, mixed uh, incontinence, urge incontinence, GSM and pelvic, uh, pelvic uh, pain, uh, cr pelvic chronic pain. So yes, uh, we have very good improvements and you will see this graph uh, each, each, uh, by each pathology. We have really nice improvements by only sitting the, pa the patients on the chair. They, they, they say that they were between maybe two to three in, in what they feel like uh, is, a, is a good a tone of the vaginal wall and muscles. And after just only six, tre six treatments, we also almost reach eight. And those eight stay for a while. And we see that almost half of that improvement was gone after 12 months. Well, uh, if, if, if we go to the gym for six weeks and we leave it, there is not going to be any, any, anything that is going to be long lasting and it's going to be for life. So we need to put them back on the chair. We need to put them back or heat, up, uh, heat the gym again so we can get some improvements. So this is a therapy that is not only been done once, but you need to do some maintenance. If you're going to enroll into a gym, into my pelvic gym, then you need to come, uh, as, as, as I'm going to tell you uh, at the end, we do so the treatments and we also ask for some uh, monthly uh, semestral uh, maintenance. Stress urinary incontinence, high CQCF, 14, this is almost like a type two, type three stress urinary incontinence that we lower down by enhancing the muscles uh, response to almost getting dry people into six months. And as you see, the muscles may be relaxed, maybe the contraction is a little bit loose, and this can come back, but never as it, as it was before. So what do we put here? Maintenance, that's it. So mix your urinary incontinence, I love that because as, as, as I told you before, I was improving the, the, the stress urinary incontinence. So I was improving the stress part, but the, that, is, uh, that is stress part also improved because the urge was out of there. So it's, it's uh, sorry is that you come from uh, is a huge to from nine to almost two points after you finish the treatment that it was amazing because i didn't have that much to do to to uh, give to my patients as a, as a gynecologist as a surgeon i didn't have any tools for urge so this uh, I know that I have a low number of patients. Remember, I was I was in a private clinic, so uh, so I don't have that big numbers that you can have in a hospital. And I would recommend this therapy if you have these massive uh, patients asking for help with the ear to urinary incontinence, genital urinary syndrome of menopause. How we can come from almost ten to a uh, seven? How does muscle Treatment regenerates vaginal atrophy, blood flow, blood flow, growth factors, blood flow. So more vasodilatation, we create more lubrication, better tissues. So we are creating tightening effects. We are creating muscle tones and we are creating better tissue. This is the importance. So there is good tools for the gynecologist only by sitting our patients here. What about my pelvic uh, chronic pain patients from, from those five patients that I set on my share only six treatments? There's 25% improvement, almost 20 improvements after the final treatments. I, will, I, 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 I need to rethink about my energies, my hurts, and maybe increase the number of um, uh, sessions on those patients. And this is, this is, what, is what is the science. We need to 
try a hypothesis and prove it right, prove it wrong, and learn from, uh, from our medicine-based experience. So this is not that I failed. This is something that tells me you are improving, but you need to change something. So for conclusion, functional uh, magnetic stimulation is a safe procedure and has the possibility to be used in all type of patients. This is important because age is not a matter of, of this, but also obesity and, and non uh, patients that cannot have surgery, this is a nice possibility for them. In urgent incontinence is the best option uh, uh, because you can modulate less uh, oral treatments in those mixed incontinence. So you know you're you're this is something that the pharmacist won't like because you're taking uh, money out of them but you are helping the patient to be better with the stress and with the urge in that mixed incontinence and uh, helps the muscles in the vaginal relaxation syndromes and stress urinary incontinence uh, modulates vascular changes for GSM and the combinations with the laser can be a best option for some of the patients. I don't think that the pelvic uh, uh, pain patients, I don't think that uh, I have the right protocols. I am creating better protocols with the new software update of the test and premier. Had the, we already talked with Jura and we changed the frequency and this needs to be understood that the pelvic uh, pain patients needs additional lumbar modulation. And this is something that some chairs and some other uh, technologies are lacking. You, do, you see the patient on a chair over a one battery, but what about the lumbar modulation? If you don't have that, you need a, a manual um, battery to, to help uh, to put the magnetic field there. But if you have both, you just only uh, synchronize uh, pelvic and lumbar, pelvic and lumbar, and that can help. As a conclusion, uh, uh, urge, uh, I think that uh, needs to be, uh, this is for other users, that uh, if you have a lot of urge patients, I think that you must objectively quantify it with an overacting bladder test. And I think that a GSM can improve in different symptoms, but uh, I think that we need to accurately measure the changes in, for different tests. And like in case of uh, GSM, we improve the quality of the tissue, the lubrication of the vaginal canal, but also we lower down the nicturia, the polyacuria, lower down the times that the patient when uh, wake up at night to do and go to the bathroom. And I think that postpartum treatments can start as soon as 40 days after the deliveries. I will say that maybe as, uh, with only three patients that I had, I, I am not a very active uh, uh, obstetric guy, but uh, with those patients that I got, they, it's, it's just trying to regenerate and, and, and get the muscle tone that maybe was tear or maybe was elongated by the delivery. So you want to get them, uh, give them, and going back into sex, they say how many days, 40 days, why they cannot go to the pelvic gym. Can we combine the uh, mod, uh, uh, functional uh, magnetic stimulator with urban YAC or the CO2 lasers or radio frequency? Well, I will say the absolute yes. I am the first guy who was talking, this is going to help my laser treatments. I have been using lasers for 10, almost 11 years so far in vaginal canal. And that is something that when I saw it, I saw that perfect combination. Tissue, uh, tissue remodeling because it's focused on collagen, but the, fee, uh, the functional magnetic stimulator is, is focused on the muscles. So now we can combine those two things. Remember that as you are treating the muscles and creating uh, super thresholds of, of contractions, you're creating blood flow growth factors that are going to help somehow to the tissue. If we mix those together, I think that is going to be very good because we're talking in, in, in like in two different principles, but we're talking in the same uh, in the in the same patient. We're talking in the same area. So this is this is something that that. Uh, 
that we can see because we we and and there is a lot of scientific uh, material I, I show you mine of night of 2012 with CO2 and with erbium and with a high frequency, uh, high, um, high intensity focus ultrasound and radio frequency, there is changes that uh, has been uh, has been done. I, I we did in 2017 one um, study um, and published on the uh, Red uh, magazine, and and this has been the top ten most downloaded articles, scientific articles on, on, on this era because everybody is looking. That 25% of menopausal women trying to get help, this, this is why there is so much uh, treatments with electromagnetic therapy. But remember, we're talking about combining this, what you already have, what you are wanting to do with the tissues, combining them with the treatments on the muscles. So as my good uh, friend, Dr. Cesar Arroyo, who is the president of the Hispanic Society of Static Regenerative and Functional Gynecology, who I was working with in, in Barcelona, I was the first vice president of that society. I think that we are looking for a way that we can combine these treatments and the more therapeutic approaches and non-surgical that you can give to the patient, this is something that, uh, that is going to change your, your life, uh, or, or your life, not your patient's life. Finally, this device can do it for you without you breaking a sweat. The functional magnetic stimulation field propagates through clothes, skin, and bones, going deep into your body, and is, through induction, transformed into a local electrical field, depolarizing the motor nerves. The signals travel along the nerves to the muscles and forces them to contract. The muscles are continuously forced to contract with almost no fatigue. The energy needed is sourced from the nearby fat deposits, quickly reducing the local fat tissue. The continuous intense muscle contractions by the FMS forces the muscles to increase in strength and volume, and thus shape the body in the most natural way. With the applicator built into the seat and backrest of the chair, the magnetic field reaches structures inside your pelvic floor and back area. Just by sitting on the chair, the FMS exercises the deep pelvic floor muscles that even the most meticulous fitness users tend to forget. Exercise without effort. The future is now. I think that the future is now. Yes, this this is how my patient sits comfortable, and in my aesthetic point of view, because I'm an aesthetic doctor, I am also helping to to get better Botox, better abs, just by sitting there, thirty minutes, more than fifty thousand contractions, and this is me trying the new core system back in Slovenia, and this is the the, the YouTube. You can see it. I, I was having a good time. I was, I, I was, yeah, look at my face. I was feeling some muscles that I have never contracted in my life. I, I feel it. It's hard. It's, it's something that, that most of men don't use. We, we, don't, we, we don't know what is a male's cages exercise for this. So all the Doctor, energy the video is not yes. possible to see. All right. Let me let me off. Oh, it's because uh, I am sharing the the wrong screen here. Here. Okay. So look at my face. Oh, look at that face. Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. I am feeling it. Uh huh. Look, some muscles that I I I I, I, I and, and the good thing about this is that the battery. You can move it forward or backward uh, to the sides. Uh, also, the lumbar ones can, can go this ways. 
to, to change it. So no matter how thin or how fat my patient is, she will sit comfortable and I can, I just move the chair, just, sorry, I just move the battery forward or backward to find the right spot for her. And this is, this is good uh, because the patient is not moving. The patient is sitting comfortable and, and you see the frequency as I was explaining in this video. And you can find it in, in YouTube. Uh, it, it was, uh, it was, a nice, nice uh, uh, day in, in, in Slovenia when, when I tried the core. Uh, uh, let me stop the video. I don't want to hear They say don't get close to the head with the head. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so, I, uh, I, I, I did try it in Dubai with the two batteries, and now that they incorporated this, uh, this new um, hand pieces that are that they can uh, adapt to any part of the body and, and you can put it into the, in, in the ties or in the app and you can have four batteries. They will not act simultaneously, but they will be rotating in, into the different frequencies programs that, are, that are already are into the software as presets uh, suggested by the company and as, uh, uh, with the suggestions of frequency and programs created by us, by, by, the, by the medical uh, supporters of, of this technology. So one single equipment, four different batteries. This is, this is out of here. So uh, I don't know if you tune late, but my friend Working from the gym and so trying to gain muscles, but there are no results no matter how hard you try. Introducing the Tesla Former Machine for functional magnetic stimulation. Why waste time at the gym when you can let the Tesla Former do the work for you? Through the power of the functional magnetic stimulation. All you need is lay down for 30 minutes. Tesla Former is non-invasive and painless, and it stimulates the muscles with the use of high-intensity magnetic fields. The Tesla Former treatment is hassle-free, and you don't even have to remove your clothes. Tesla is your lunchtime quick fix to the toned body you've always wanted. Visit a Tesla Former authorized clinic to... So, look, those are the results that uh, has been shared with the, with the company. And this is uh, after uh, six sessions. And I have to say that uh, since uh, I am quarantined in my house, I bring my Tesla Prestige to my house and my wife and Mia, we are using it here daily. <laughs> so we have something to do. This is uh, my family from Iskra Medical. Uh, I miss them all. And I, I wish this uh, COVID is uh, happily, it has a quick and fast ending and everybody keeps safe so we can see and meet each other again to, to continue doing the work. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or you can uh, write me an email. Hey, if you have any good uh, social media pictures that you took during my webinar, please tag me on, on my social media. These are my web pages, Dr. Gaviria and Advanced Laser Institute of America, where I am here in Virginia. If you want to train with me online, just click on that picture. And I'm in Singapore. So, muchas gracias por la atención. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Gaviria. Uh, I think I personally for myself, I learned a lot from you. So we'll move on to the Q&A sessions. We have quite a number of questions. So, okay, for the first question, can you explain the difference between functional magnetic stimulation and electromagnetic stimulation? Yeah, um, both uh, are uh, aiming for the same. So the principle of trying to create an outside uh, a stimulation for the contraction of the muscle is the same principle. What is the difference? The difference is that you are running an electric field from one pole to another pole. So we're talking from one needle to another needle or maybe one needle that is creating the depolarization. So we're creating uh, a, a stimulation 
by just doing contact with the muscle that we want to trigger. With the magnetic field, everything within that magnetic field is going to be depolarized. So there's no need for contact. You just need to be near the field to get that same principle of contraction. So I will say that non-contact, more deep tissue and heterogeneous tissue, deep tissues and different tissues are being targeted by one single field. So I will say that that is the major difference between one another. So no contact and we are running electricity and the other one is just giving a magnetic field that is going to do the changes. Sure. Thanks so much. Uh, Jay Bell, I'm just thinking whether um, you can share your screen later regarding we have this ultrasound video showing the difference between FMS and uh, electromagnetic stimulation. Maybe you can show it to us. Yes, I will share it with you. Yeah, because so, I think for our right. doctors, uh, yeah, sorry, for our doctors, uh, there's a lot of doctors asking us like, what's the difference between um, uh, FMS and EMS. So uh, I, I looked through the video before, so I thought it would be good to share to our audience here. Can, I, can you share with your screen? Juan, uh, Juan Antonio has the screen. Please let him okay. uh, share. I think I have it ready now. Just a second, please. Microphone. Yeah, And you are mute, uh, Juan, just me. Hello? Can you hear me? No. Okay, I will try. Okay, he's unmuted. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. I put the video again just for a few seconds, just to show you the difference. On the right side, functional magnetic stimulation. We can see how can strengthen the muscles, uh, how deep we can stimulation. And if you see on the left side, you can see how superficial is electrical stimulation because there's a different way to arrive. It's very superficial. We cannot go deep with electrical stimulation. It's absolutely different technology. With a functional magnetic stimulation, we can reach between seven to eight centimeters depth. Clear? Clear? Okay, thank you, Juan. Thank you, my pleasure. Yeah, um, there are also quite a number of people asking about the contraindications of this treatment. So, doctor, uh, there's this question Would a copper IUD, IUD be contraindicated to this treatment? Well, uh, it's, uh, it, this is a, a very deep tissue, and this is a very um, um, deep uh, um, uterine device that uh, the magnetic field is uh, sometimes is out of reach. So I, I know that uh, Juan is uh, was going to talk about this because there's a lot of questions for patients about the contraindications when when we have like hip replacements and we have this so uh, this is our a couple of contraindications that are, are specifically and this is a, this is from the point of view that that we need uh, to understand all of the users and all of the patients those are the most important contraindications we have already with this technology let me just put full page to do it easier. Sorry, uh, sorry, Juan, I can't hear you clearly. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Let me better. try plug your... Now it's better? Yeah, yeah much it's better, better. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So, um, we have a thing 
we are producers. We have no doctor here that way. So uh, we talked about the general point of view. So pregnancy, nobody is working with any medical device when somebody is uh, pregnant or thing is should be pregnant. Cancer, again, same thing. Uh, of course, when somebody is cancer free after five years and the doctor was treating this patient is telling us it's absolutely, uh, let's say, done and my patient is absolutely let's say recovered normality without cancer uh, after five years we can start treating these patients epilepsy is a contraindication for this uh, magnetic stimulation cardiac pacemaker of course yes because we can let's say damage the device cardiac arrhythmia we don't want to create any distortion on this uh, cardiac uh, say disease um, severe active lung uh, pathologies we need uh, like any other device into the market, we need healthy patients coming to be treated. Open wounds or near or in the area of stimulation, recent surgery, complete muscle tear in or near the area of stimulation, ferromagnetic metals, ferromagnetic metal implants. Only ferromagnetic, this is a, must be a very old passion, must be a very old passion because actually that is a different, let's say, materials we are working with to do different implants, like, uh, I don't know, titanium, any other thing. There is no problem with it, uh, but, but that's something ferromagnetic composition into, into this uh, implant, it's a contraindication. Why? Because we can heat this uh, implant if there is a ferromagnetic composition in. So this is the only reason. And medical pumps like, uh, uh, sorry, insulin. This is the regional contraindications we have already on our technology. So those those are those are the the, the medical contraindications that 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 we use uh, so far, and 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 those those are needed to be understood by the patients and by the medical doctor who is who is using that. So uh, um, just just need, need to be uh, aware of those. What about those who are having a kidney kidney failure? Yeah, well, uh, I believe yeah. Mm. There is there is no contraindication on, on on that on that pathology. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The next question. Is there any good experience of restoring pelvic function after spinal surgery? Well, uh, I, I think that, that that is out of my field, and I, I, I hope uh, Javier or Juan has some good answer about it. Uh, um, this is this is not my field, so I I, yeah. I, I don't have any experience. We have some, uh, let's say, feedback, good, very good feedback on recovering for different patients, different issues uh, from some of the doctors who are using the device. They are not here connected today, but also some physiotherapists who are recovering people from some, uh, let's say, hearts on in sports. So I cannot answer you on that concrete uh, question, but uh, we know that the answer is uh, all, should be yes, absolutely. We increase the muscle stimulation so we can help a lot the way we will help when we talk about physiotherapy or recovering of this kind of patients is a different scenario there is no rules there is no rules there there is nothing a standard that you can apply on on the patient each patient coming to the clinic in this case for the physiotherapist to recover something is a different scenario so the physiotherapist must do the real diagnostic and start checking how is the evolution of the patient and also the position of the hampies, the position of the patient, is a different way to work. Okay, thank you, Juan. Pleasure. Okay. Okay, we have two questions from this doctor in, uh, in India. So, uh, if let's say the patients have severe case of OAB, how to proceed? And also the second question, what are other protocols for UI? Well, um, that is Pancholia, Dr. Pancholia, thank you for your questions. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Overacting bladder, what other technologies or medicine are compared to this? Well, few. 
is there is a severe case, how to proceed, you just proceed with the same protocols that we are doing. And there is not about how do you choose the energy on those patients. The protocols that are created or presented there are by, by somehow uh, being tested and the frequency that they have has been tested to improve. So what, what we are doing is like when we go to the gym, we start walking, then we jog, and then we run. So this is a pelvic floor therapy that what you are going to do is increase the, uh, the energy within the, within the, the power in, in, on, on, the, on, the, on the patient, and you will increase it gradually. So once you get the patient sitting down, let's say overacting bladder, she's sitting down, you, you choose your, your presets, and what you do is you increment the range field and the power of the, of, the, of the battery as the patient is comfortable and she can handle the 20 to 30 minutes. Then you see and then you take notes. She started at 40% of energy. Next session, we're going to try to reach to 45 and 50 and 55. I in do increments every treatment by five until, well, I, I got some patients that they start in 70. I have some patients that it's starting 30% of the, of, the, of the energy of the magnetic field at itself. Because we, we need to, 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 to be incrementing the, the energy so more, uh, more deep tissues are contracted, more muscles are, are being uh, depolarized, more contraction is being created, but this has to be gradually. So it's not about, okay, depending on the, on the case, I'm going to, to increment or not the energy. No, the energy has to be going up, but what you change are the parameter sets on the frequency that you are achieving. Like, let's say we're going to put an incrementing frequency for nine seconds. We're going to rest for nine. Then we're going to modulate frequencies on, on contracting and discontracting, and we're going to rest. So those protocols are presented there. So those are suggestions for us. And I say that I did some uh, suggestions on frequency to Jure from uh, to Iskra Medical, because, uh, because we need to understand, and, 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 and we are talking about safe uh, uh, protocols, parameters, presets that, that are working. And I know that uh, why can we improve those results faster? Because uh, as I say, uh, as I saw on the, on the questions, what if we have a patient that lives very far away? Well, if she lives far away from the gym, she's not going to go to the gym. This is, this is something that we, the patient needs to understand. If she wants this therapy, that therapy should be weekly and better if she goes twice a week. So there is no like one single treatment, sit on the chair and you're getting there and, and, and you are without overacting bladder or you are uh, with a... Uh, um, uh, erection, dysfunction, with one single treatment, there is no way that you can achieve that. I think that the thing is that you need to base your experience on what you're having and personalize each treatment for each patient. So if you see results, then you are going to be incrementing the energy capacity of the, of the battery. Next question. While doing male patients' pelvic treatment with this chair, some are worried about their fertility concerns that the magnetic field may affect it badly. Is there any side effects? And how to explain to the patients that, it, uh, that they will not get harm because of this technology? Uh, harm in the sense that it will affect their like, sperm quality or the fertility. Okay, there is no uh, um, report uh, somehow, some yet, and yet, and I don't think that there's going to be any, any, any um, report on complications as the resulting of harming or worst uh, a case of fertility. What I believe, and I, what I have seen on female patients, uh, 
is that the improvements on the tissue that has been treated is better. So if we're walking, we're talking about blood flow, we are going to increment the blood flow to testicles and we can be in, in incrementing the quality of nutrition of, this, of those spermatozoids. So I think that if we have a good urologists that are doing this, I think that we, we can also be doing some studies on that because I think that, that that is also going to be a great field, not only for males on erectile dysfunction and prostatitis, I think that this can be also a, a achieving changes in the vascular support for fertility. I think that this has this is a field that we need to 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 be doing some studies. I am an OBGYN. I have my own uh, uh, andrologist who who takes care of my fertility patients. But 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 I think that that this can also be helping those conditions, not worsening or, 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 or in somehow com compromising the, the capability of fertility of our male patients. So uh, maybe I can just summarize. That means this treatment actually helps the stimulation of your, the blood. So uh, nutrients will be delivered to, um, I mean, to the, the, the male, I mean, the male position, right? Exactly. Okay, uh, next question. Maybe this question is more towards us. Yes? Uh, uh, Jasmine, I think we have a question, so... Yeah. Put on the volume. Which one? Yeah. yeah. Put on the volume, because he said, he said, no, no. I want to ask uh, Jure. Now it's better, because we're together with one. So there is a question also to give a break to the doctor. A more technical question I would like to ask, I mean, Jure, our CEO can, uh, can answer. Uh, are you there, Jure? Hello, good day. Yes. If you can explain briefly, uh, considering the close relation to electric, electric field, to magnetic field, how does the Tesla former isolate the magnetic field? Meaning, how does it reduce the electrical influence of the field? Or is the same intensity of electrical electric field? This is from Mark from Korea. Basically, electricism is always electricism and magnetoelectricism. So uh, these things are connected. What is important to understand that it is very, very difficult for electrical field to get deep into the body. As you have, as you have seen on the video, uh, with electrical stimulation, we are always making only superficial contractions. And if you look to the elvic, every pelvic, uh, pelvic floor, uh, all the muscles are deep, deep inside in your body. And you need the way to get uh, this uh, electrical field to stimulate the deep muscles. So like from the Star Wars, we have Beam Me Up Scott, Scotty, and we have the beam me up of the electrical field by the magnetism. So the magnetic field is basically starting at the applicator in the coil in the applicator, going through your clothes, going through your skin, going through your bones, deep into the pelvic floor. And there inside the body, it is transformed into local, uh, local electrical field. So this local in situ deep electrical field is the one giving you the results, the clinical results uh, that we are uh, seeing uh, from the doctor's presentation and from the other doctors. Uh, what is uh, basically, there is a, a, a possibility to, uh, uh, to put the electrical field into the body through the, the vaginal electrodes, that is true. Uh, but p women do not like to use the uh, vaginal applicators uh, for, for this treatment. And the second thing is you will only get the stimulation of, of the muscles nearby the electrode. So only the close muscles around the vagina will be stimulated. And in the practice, if we want to have a strong pelvic floor, we do need a whole pelvic floor to exercise, not just a specific point. So this is basically not a good substitute for the uh, magnetic um, stimulation. And uh, if you imagine that women do not like this kind of treatment, uh, then you can even more imagine that men are not so fan also. 
I mean, I, I, thank you, Jure, and uh, I want to relate this question with another one we, because we've been, have been rolling with the studies. Uh, I have a question at how much does it help erectile dysfunction? And if we have any studies, maybe you can tell a little bit the experience because we've been dealing with this uh, for a certain time and it's very difficult to do the studies. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, erectile dysfunction is not the easiest uh, symptom or diagnosed or pathology to explore uh, the curing of because first of all the problem is gathering the patients. Uh, it is very difficult to find the volunteers that are, go that are willing to go to the specific study aimed at uh, this pathology because there is a big social taboo on it. Uh, we are having currently two active studies. There, it looks good, uh, but it's too soon to give the final, uh, the final results. But what I can say from the past is that we have fabulous results of, of a number of patients. And of course, uh, there are different reasons why you have uh, ED, so there we cannot cure all of them. So patient selection is a very, uh, very important thing uh, on this. And we are actually still working a little to find the right uh, suitable patient who will give us the best uh, response. So it is a little work uh, uh, under progress, but on the other hand, we already have a lot of very happy uh, users. Thank you. Thank you. I was I was I was, I was looking in the I was looking in the in the chat because some of, of our attendees are doing the questions over the chat, so the, the chat get lost. That's why we have like the Q and A uh, part of this. So I was I was looking through the the Q and As, and they were asking me how do I combine EVDs with magnetic uh, or or the 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 um, the, the traditional or previous uh, treatments for females that I was using. So I told you that I use lasers, I told you that I, I use uh, radio frequency uh, and I use LEDs. So what I do is depending on my patient, I do the treatment uh, with, a, with a vaginal treatment within lasers or with the radio frequency. <clears throat> then some, sometimes I use my LED therapy to get the inflammation period LED, uh, uh, lower. And in that same moment is that the patients start my first session of pelvic. So I do that for three weeks, and then I do my second session of laser, and then I lower down my sessions on pelvic maintenance. So I come from two weeks, I pass to weekly, and, <coughs> and I maintain them at least once a month. So what I sell is packages, packages of treatments, and packages of maintenance. So what I feel is like I am selling them a gym uh, membership. So I, I sell full gear membership and they come for the treatment and then they come monthly for the maintenance. So, you know, they keep the muscle tone good and they will no go back. Remember, we're talking about neuromodulation. So that's how we improve overactive bladder. It's not about the muscles, it's about the neuromodulation of what we're having. How we get lubrication because we're getting better um, um, vasodilatation because of the muscle contraction. So there's changes within the muscle tone improvement. And that's how I do it. I was just answering uh, a good friend, Ma, uh, Maria Luisa Marillo, who is a user of both technologies in Spain, that she was asking, how do I mix this? So it is it, the more that you put into tissue and muscle regeneration to the pelvic floor, the better improvement that your patient will have. Thank you, Thank doctor. You. Uh, I think we have time for more questions, no? Let me see if I have. Uh, how can a, a patient who benefited from the treatment make the resource last? I think you mentioned a little bit of the maintenance. And uh, I would like to, because this maintenance is, is we can see that it's both ways. Like for us, I mean, for a doctor being good for a long term, the patient will come back. 
And uh, how can you give us a little bit more about this information, doctor? Well, I, I remember that when, when I started using EVDs for my treatments, uh, we, we were only doing like once or maybe twice. And what we saw is that if we increment the number of treatments or treatment sessions, we, we, we look at more long lasting results. Okay, so it is not like we have Mr. Olympia, the, um, the governor Arnold Schwarzenegger is still being built up. Mm -hmm. He's still a little bit built up, but he's still doing some gym. He's still going and pumping up some heavy weights. That's how he, he's still in shape. So to, still, to, to be in shape, you need some maintenance. This is, this is a collagen doesn't last forever. That's the first reason I am doing some uh, EVD treatments because the collagen uh, depletion on the patient aging, that is what the patient is coming for. And, and I am doing a study because collagen is creating wrinkles to, the, to this. And, and it's not that I'm going to put a magnetic field because I don't need to, to improve the, 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 the tone of the muscles, and, uh, uh, but the tissue. So that's why we, and the, my study, what, what, if you saw my study, they were down and they were incrementing. That is where the maintenance need to be. Because if we do one just simple treatment and then we do a follow-up of one year, the patient will not have those same results that you have. It, I think that it will in, be improved somehow but, but that increment of, 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 of improvement, it will be lowering down within the time. So maintenance is a key. And if you see maintenance as a key, and you see maintenance as you are investing, because I am a user, I invest in this machine, I buy it, but I am getting my return of my investment because this helps, but also is going to be getting more improvement and maintenance and that maintenance translates to money coming to my clinic every month with that same patient for as long as the patient wants this is not a treatment that i will offer it for a life because patient will go like okay but i am i am a doctor so the patient doesn't see me as a gym but if you enroll on a gym you enroll for life you want a membership that goes yearly and you can go and get the gym and do the sweats every day that you want or every day that you can because you will feel better. As, as the patient feels better, she will gladly come back. So you need to understand that this is, we are not trained in medical field to be invest. That's the problem. We are not trained how to invest and how to get the money back out of the machines that we buy. But I know that there's a lot of OBGYNs out there that are tuning in, in in my webinar, and they have ultrasound machine. And that ultrasound machine, it is not active every day. That ultrasound machine is not active when they are not in the office. But my medical assistants just sit the patient on the chair every Thursday without me being in the office because I know how they start, what are the protocols, what are the presets, and they sit and just only per one single pay, uh, medical assistant go, sit the patient, put the parameters, go out, 20, 30 minutes, the patient is reading maybe a book, and there is no supervision whatsoever during the treatment. So you're not wasting medical personnel, you're not wasting your time, you're creating money while you are not there. So I, I think that, that 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 maintaining thing, that is that is something that we need to understand. We are improving. We having a pelvic gym for males, females in our office that are sitting comfortable, getting better. Well, thank you, thank you, doctor. I don't know, uh, Jasmine. I think we are on time now. Yes. I don't know if we have time for another question. I, we can go for two more questions. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Two more questions and then we finish because uh, it's been great. It's late in Singapore. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, not late. Nine, it's nine. I think they need to sleep yet. also. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can help you. Okay. There's this question. How long? 
how long can we do the treatment, let's say, if they want to do for urinary incontinence and muscle stimulation? Can they do on the same day? Yes, I, 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 was, I was saying that, and that to answer my, my good doctor from India, if, if the patient comes uh, far away for, to, to get into your office, you try to put it in together. What I do, I do uh, uh, vaginal treatments uh, first, whatever I put, uh, I am using my laser radio frequency, let's PRP, whatever, and then I do the muscle stimulation. Sure, thanks. Okay. Okay, Is, let me see if there's any other more questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I saw one question about plantar fascia, frozen shoulder, no my feel. I'm sorry, I cannot answer that. About okay. my experience in ear and retention, well, I feel that if we, 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 we need to, uh, to understand what is, what is uh, ear and retention. So we need to, the right diagnostic, because maybe what we have is a stress urethra, maybe after a surgery, we, we need to understand what is the physiopathology of urine retention. And after that, if that assessment and that diagnostic leads to improving tissue or improving muscle tone, that is what, what is going to be helping that in that case. So first, we need the right diagnostic to see if what we are trying to aim, tissue regeneration and muscle tone, neuromodulation, this is going to help. So I, I, I hope this answered your question. Okay. Uh, I, 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 there's a question I'll say, any maximum hours that we can do at one day? Uh, well, uh, I just sit my patient for 20, 30 minutes, depending on, on what I am aiming for. But, but sometimes when my patients come for the aesthetic point of view, like my wife, she takes like one hour, one hour and a half because we're doing buttocks, we're doing outer legs, we're doing abs. So we need 20 minutes at least for every area. So if we, we are treating different areas uh, in aesthetic point and the Tesla former, then you might need more time. But there is no like maximum, uh, I don't know if Juan or Javier knows about, okay, if we sit the patient for one hour, it's going to be more stimulated than 20 minutes. Uh, I will say that muscles get tired and, 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 and there, is, there is no need for it. At the end, it's like going to the gym 24 hours per day. So it's not necessary. Nobody is doing like this. So it's something that makes sense. Of course, if I have a clinic, if I have a patient getting time and money enough to visit my clinic full day, let's say I can arrange a special, let's say, visit for him to treat him in different areas. I will not repeat the same area, same day, of course not. But I can treat arms, legs, abs, but same day, yes, I can. If my patient have time, they want to do it like this, or maybe there is no other option because my patient is coming from so far away to my clinic. Why not? We can do it. The only thing we will not do is to repeat the same area, same day, because it's not necessary something that is it's not working much more because you repeat the area very often. It's like going to the gym. If you go to the gym to exercise your arms, you have to combine correctly with other muscles are already connected with. So, or, or your, let's say, your trainer will allow you to, okay, today you have to do breast and legs, and tomorrow you will go to go back and arms. Doesn't matter, but it's a very good question to combine all the muscles are connected to avoid the overcharge and doing something that is wasting. Uh, your time last. Thanks, Juan. Yeah. yeah. I think we have uh, we have answered most of the questions. So yes. thank you, Dr. Gaviria, and everyone for attending this webinar. Thank you for your time. And do speak to our sales representative from New Asia or your country distributor if let's say you are interested to, to try this machine uh, in your clinic. So before you leave, uh, as you leave this webinar, there will be a post-webinar survey link sent to you. So uh, would like everyone to give your feedback on this webinar. Thank you so, so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much, Dr. and Iskra Medical. We'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 B